Rub up your engines! Well, a company in Brazil, now a certification to sell ethanol-based aviation fuel. This is the first one in the world that's been certified. It's called Ryzen. Ryzen, Ryzen up. <laughs> <laughs> Spelled differently, but it sounds the same, right? And I have no idea what it means in Portuguese, which is what they speak in Brazil, of course. They don't speak Spanish. They speak Portuguese. I don't know what rising means in Portuguese. Some of the stuff is an outright fraud. They say by 2050, the airline industry is searching to reach net zero emissions by 2050. All right, net zero emissions is a crock of baloney, just like carbon credits. Well, you got carbon credits because you didn't cut the trees down in the forest, so that gives you credit, so now you can melt things and pollute, right? It's all nonsense. Net zero emissions is a meaningless word, right? You're still burning a fuel. It's putting out pollutants. There's no way out of it. And they're just trying to sugarcoat the whole thing by saying, well, it's net zero, which means absolutely nothing. It's like the things that used to say, this is fat free. These cookies are fat free. Yeah, okay. So instead of fat, they use carbohydrates and sugar, which when you eat them, turn to fat in your body, right? <laughs> Calling yourself net zero emissions is a crock of baloney. Who knows? This is 2050. So maybe it's the next, you know, 27 years we're going to be hearing this crap. It doesn't mean anything, but it sounds good at the sound bites when they try it out on people and looks good. Oh, look, we're net zero emissions. It's nonsense. If you're burning fuel, you're polluting stuff. And try to sugarcoat it all you want. It is not net zero. I, I just can't believe the crap that comes out. People fall for this stuff. Be Free says, I have noisy downshifting. I just bought a 99 F-150. It runs quiet and smooth. You can hardly feel the tranny shift. But if you're in cruise control and it's climbing a slope and it kicks down to a lower gear, it clunks and goes in hard. When I'm not going fast, it shifts smoothly. What could be wrong? There's only one of two things that can do it. The U-joints on the drive shaft, right? If they're worn, it'll clunk when it goes down. And that's easy. I got to think how to replace and check U joints on your car. Scotty, watch that video on YouTube. Get up there, you grab the shaft, and if it wiggles, you know, the joints are worn, you can replace the U joints, right? If not that, and since it is a 99, I assume the transmission's just starting to wear out. That's what Fords do. When you're under a load in a Ford transmission, and then you're going up a hill and it's got a downshift, if this gear is worn that it's downshifting into, then it's going to clunk just like that. Now, pray that it's the U joints. Could be simple to check, but if it's not that, it's inside of the transmission. And I know Fords, okay? And that's a 99 Ford, right? You didn't see how many miles it has. Now, I'm sure it's got a lot of miles. Odds are the transmission is just starting to go out, and I'd say, baby it, because you say when you baby it, it doesn't clunk. So, I would personally baby it, because otherwise, eventually, you're going to need a new transmission. And Ford F-150s and 99 were really good trucks, but the trannies only last so long. Usually, after 150, 200,000, they need replacing. SC Brown says, I got a 2005 Nissan, and the tailpipe's rattling like mad. I look like there's a pin or a bolt that holds a part on, but it's missing. We're going to be. All exhaust systems on modern cars hang, and they have to have a little bit of flexibility. Otherwise, if they're totally tight, you hit bumps and stuff, they'd snap off. They hang on rubber donut stuff that hang them, right? There's a part on the frame, and then there's a part on the exhaust system. Usually, they're little pointy parts that stick out with a little ball to hold them on, and the rubber donuts fit on. You probably just broke the donut. Look and see. You might need another one. Now, sometimes, you said it's an 05, so, geez, it's almost 20, 19 years old, right? Could be the weld's broken, and the hanger part's completely gone. You could weld on a new part, and then get a donut and hang it on. All exhaust systems are hanging, and the donuts hold them in place. Maybe the whole thing's broken. Just look at it, compare it to another car, and you'll quickly see, okay, well, this part's gone. I need to put another one on. And in a pinch, if you don't want to weld anything, you can get aftermarket hangers, and they will bolt on the pipe itself. And then the hanger will have rubber in it, and then that bolts to the frame of the car. You can replace them with universal ones if you want, if the rest of it is all rotten away. Well, here's an article that doesn't surprise me, and it says, Elon Musk reportedly gave the order himself for the displays in Teslas to prevent overly optimistic estimates of driving range. Of course, they all do it. You get in any modern car, and it's got a little thing that said the miles per gallon you're getting. It's total nonsense. Even my wife's Lexus, the other day I was driving her around, right? And at one point, it said it was getting 190 miles a gallon. Now, come on. The car gets 20-something, right? 
<laughs> but while I was gliding, you know, don't ever believe the crap that's on the cars. They're selling you a car. You know, they want to make it look better than it actually is. Now, as the story goes, Elon Musk gave the Tesla workers an order to present overly optimistic driving ranges for the electric car. And this is a report from Rutgers. That's a pretty big news organization. This is just some clown who doesn't like him saying, oh, look, he's making this stuff up. <laughs> they would get sued if they didn't have something backing them up. And talking about the range, I laughed my butt off because the other day, Tesla cut its price of some of their Model S's and Model Y's by $10,000. You think, how can he cut the price by $10,000? Well, he was putting smaller, cheaper batteries in them. So they actually have even less range than they did originally. And it comes out to 80, 90 miles per trip, less right? People are whining, well, these electric cars, they don't go far enough. And they say, oh, don't worry, in the future, they'll go further and further. What does Elon do? He cuts the price 10 grand, but he also lowers the mileage, 80 to 90 miles per charge that you can drive. So, you know, they're going completely backwards to what the theory was. They told us years ago, well, electric cars will start expensive and then they'll get cheaper as time goes on and the batteries will get cheaper. Guess what? The batteries now cost more. And they say, don't worry, they'll go further and further. Now he's putting batteries that go less further to save money because it costs too much money to build them. And I just read an article the other day, and I firmly believe this. The guy said, there's not enough lithium on the planet to make these millions and millions of electric lithium ion battery cars. There just isn't. And so what'll happen is when they do start running out, that'll be the end of lithium ion batteries as we know them. They won't be able to manufacture them because they will not have the raw materials, right? The fact that now he's already putting cheaper, smaller batteries in because obviously the prices of these fancy batteries, unlike what they said, you know, five years ago, don't worry, they'll be cheaper in the future. They're actually much more expensive than they were. That he's putting smaller batteries, lower range, which is exactly the opposite of what people want, right? So here we go again, Elon Musk with crazy nonsense going on and he'll do anything to sell the cars, even go against the thing of, well, we're going to be cheaper and we're going to go further. And then the only way he could go cheaper was to go less further. And that's not what people want. They want them to go farther and be cheaper. Well, I guess you can't have your cake and eat it too with electric cars. So why even buy them in the first place? Okay. The GMC electric vehicles out the Hummer electric vehicle. And man, it's a gas hog, just like the original Hummer. Now, not a gas hog, but an electric hog. Here's what it's rated at 50 miles per gallon electric right and it's not like 50 miles a gallon gasoline it's another fantasy greeny thing to make them look better than they are because okay here's this hummer and it's rated at 50 mpg electric right guess what a model 3 tesla's rated at not 50 mpg -E, but 141 almost three times more efficient than this giant hummer with this humongous battery right the whole thing is patently absurd because that means that the Hummer uses almost three times as much electricity as a Model 3 Tesla. And they've shown that at today's prices, if you charge at a supercharger when you're traveling around the country, it's now more expensive to charge it up with electricity than it is to use gasoline for a Model 3, right? If you got a Hummer that uses three times as much electricity just about, that means it's three times more expensive. <laughs> This fantasy of the electric vehicle saving things, that Hummer is a gigantic electric hog. Of course, you make them so big with giant batteries, you know. Some of one of them, I believe, has like a thousand horsepower. What in God's name does somebody need a thousand horsepower for, right? But, you know, it just shows the fantasy of this electric stuff. They're electric hogs now instead of gas hogs. Well, the U.S. Department of Interior just approved Revolution Wind for making more wind turbines off the coast of Connecticut and Rhode Island. Here's a phenomenal thing. Here we have the typical disconnect between reality and government. The U.S. government just approved, said, oh, they can build this, right? Well, about a month ago or so, state of Rhode Island said, no, we don't want to do this because they see, hey, uh, this isn't going to work. Look at the money they're losing in Europe building wind turbines. But of course, in the usual total disconnect from reality, Washington, D.C., the Department of the Interior said, oh, this is a good thing. They're going to throw government money into it. You know, the state said, nah, what do the feds care? They just throw money like water on everything. It's not their money. What do they care? And here's the interesting thing. This is the feds, right? Here's what's going to be situated. 15 miles south of Rhode Island coast, 32 miles southeast of the Connecticut coast, and 12 miles southwest of Martha's Vineyard. All right, people, the way they're built, they got to be about 35 miles out. You can't see them, right? The people of Connecticut, who obviously must have more push, it's going to be 32 miles southeast of them. So the only thing they're maybe going to see are the tips of these things, right? 
<laughs> but the people in Martha's Vineyards and people in Rhode Island, they're a lot closer. 15 miles south of Rhode Island and 12 miles southeast of Martha's Vineyard. Well, Martha's Vineyard is where a lot of ultra-rich people live, right? But there aren't that many of them. They're going to have these things 12 miles offshore, and they're going to see these ugly things on their beautiful vista of the ocean. Now, it'll be interesting to see if they actually do build these things. But as I said, this is our total disconnect of the federal government. They approved this where Rhode Island said they didn't want it. Department of Interior saying, yes, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Where are we going to have it? In the Civil War II, where the government will say one thing and the states say another? Maybe, maybe Rhode Island will secede from the U Union, right? <laughs> and try to create its own country. I don't know. <laughs> All I got to say, it's a total disconnect of the feds and the local governments of what people want versus what these idiots in Washington are trying to push on people. Everybody's showing these wind turbines don't last that long. In Europe, they're having problems with them, breaking down. The company's losing money. Some of the companies that are in the process of building wind turbines have sold all those assets to other people because they realize, hey, this isn't profitable. You're to cash in while we can, right? But these idiots in the Department of the Interior, oh, yeah, build some more, build some more. This is fantastic, right? Total disconnect. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.